Hello, what is up everybody? Um, we're going to do another tutorial slash guide video on um, how to efficiently farm the gold coins from the anniversary event. I'm uh, making this video especially for the EU server because it's almost over on the Russian server. It's about uh, 10 more days, 9 days left here. But uh, it's still not active on the European version so I thought I'd make a video for you guys so you get the refresher on how this actually works again. Uh, if you want to get some more anniversary coins um, to buy the lots of costumes and mount skins and whatever else that's, that's gonna come along with it because on the same moment in Russian server that is we also got the Halloween event which you can see here which is bringing another whole lots of costumes uh, not everything is, is in here by the way so it's way more and you could say that everything is two platinum each so you can already see the cost so things are three platinum each then you have the broom which is uh, 15 platinum coins or maybe 30 it's actually 30 so that's a whole lot of coins if you may be uh, if you're not sure and the bats are 15 each so that's another lots of lots of coins now you're giving quite a lot of time to farm actually halloween is for the whole month i believe it's even longer yeah it's about 43 days here and then the anniversary is exactly a month, so from 15 to 16 the month on top of that. So I wanted to show you guys um, how to efficiently farm coins. Now there are maybe another way that I can think of, but this is really fast. This is going to yield you about two, um, one gold coin each, let's say two minutes. That means 20 minutes for each platinum coin. That is quite fast compared to other ways you already may know in the game. Another fast thing I can imagine is KOE farming. Now on top of KOE farming you also get a lot of other stuff like crafting materials, you're going to get Kingdom of Relic uh, fragments as well, you're gonna get a lot of different um, materials on top of only the coins. And uh, what is also good about KOE is that you can farm with the Grail on, meaning that when you do get coins there's a higher chance that they get doubled. Also your spark, um, your spark rubies here are going to be applied when farming for those coins as well. They do not apply for this farming method, neither does the grail, also does not apply for the farming method. So there are uh, these things to keep into consideration. So as it, uh, as it automatically goes, people that don't have these spark rubies and or do not have this grail either, then it's way better to do this method. If you do have these methods, if you do have these grail and the spark rubies, you might go to KV farming, depending up to you. But this is a really good way to farm, so I thought I'd show you guys exactly how this works. You have three NPCs here, you have a weaker one, you have a medium one, and you have a hard one. Now the, the, the weaker one gives you only one copper you win per fight. That's really, really low, that's not worth doing at all. Now this guy will give you a quest to at least fight with each of them once so that you get to like introduce to them. Um, it's optional but you get coins from it as well so why not only once. This guy is the medium one, gives you one silver per fight one and this one is the hardest, gives you one gold per fight one. Um, it costs you one coin so basically it's like a betting system, you pay the, the coin respective for the, for the dueler so for this guy it's gold. You pay one gold coin, if you lose, you lose it, if you win, you get two back, meaning you win one each time you win. So when you fight them, um, it's always going to be the same thing. You can always start with blow, and now there's a really good rule on how to fight this guy. Being every time he does a defense mechanism, you're going to do either of the two things. When he does now defense, I'm going to stun and blow. After I've done a stun and blow, you're 100% sure you can do blow again before he gets this, the shield up. Because he has the same cooldowns as you have. Meaning, um, you see when you do shield, you have 8 seconds cooldown to do shield again. He has the same thing. And when you do stun and blow, blow has only 5 seconds cooldown. Meaning, you can do another blow before his shield is back up. So he's gonna do shield, I'll do stun, blow. His shield is still on cooldown, my blow is gonna be ready, I'll do blow again, 7 to 8, and then he's gonna do shield. When he does shield, you have to do either two things, stun or shield yourself. Now obviously when he does shield and you don't have stun up, you're going to do shield. You're going to do shield because he's going to do 70% of the times do a blow attack after he did shield. 
which is obviously going to fail because you have shield up at the time. So it's going to fail that. It's really important that you react as fast as you can to the shield he does so that um, there's a, a small time for it to fuck up. Another important thing to know is that when you do shield, he might do still a knockdown on you as well because it's the hardest one, he's going to do everything you can do as well. Um, when he does stun, it just happens, nothing to do about it. If you're shielding, so be it, you're going to get stacks as well. But he's going to die always, he'll, well, not die, he's going to lose as first, always, guaranteed, if you follow this method. I'm going to put an easy picture you can follow on the screen. Uh, I'm going to put the picture also on the description so that you can uh, maybe even download it and put it on your second screen or something to keep you reminded of how it actually goes until you know exactly how it works and then you can get rid of it or whatever you want to do with it. Uh, I just thought it would help you guys. So in the description you can download this little thing. It's like some kind of uh, guidance. Now as you can see after you've done the fight you're gonna get a cooldown of like 55 seconds. I'm gonna say a minute to round it up. Round it up. It's always going to be a minute. During this minute you cannot uh, fight with the other duelers either. So that's an annoying long cooldown that we have to calculate into this farming method. And I think the, the, the developers really think about this because they could this could literally ruin their economy of the anniversary coins and blah 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 blah. They put this method in here so that it's not going to be abused a lot. Now you see as well on my server, the Russian server, it's going it's getting pretty much abused. A lot of people are doing um, not the way it should be, but that just happens. Um, and people are just gonna put one minute extra delay in it, and they're gonna keep repeating it. Now, aside of the delay, like I said, it's gonna yield you one gold coin each. As you can see here, it's gonna do two gold coins each time you win. You pay one gold coin. I paid one gold coin every time I start the fight. I gain two back when I win. So that is a rather fast way on getting your coins from uh, from the anniversary, gold coins in that case. Um, like I said, two minutes about each coin you get, so about 20 minutes for each platinum you get and so on and forth. Um, what you do with this is all up to you, if you wanted to automate it or still do it legit is up to you. Do it at your own risk as well, um, that's all I can say. I'll see you guys on the next one, hope this helps you out. And have a good one. Bye.